It's a you know, real pleasure to be here and you know really very much see this as a as a partnership uh, obviously ucl has some experience in this area from what we've done but also very much wanting to work with people and understand you know help support what is a local context and so you know, i'll start by saying a little bit about ucl's context and and use this as an example and i think you know through my role in the center for engineering education what we are very keen is to work with partners a, a, across the world in, in uh, you know sharing our experience and helping form communities of practice to um, you know, really empower changes to engineering education and so it's, you know, it's very much in in that spirit I'm here and you know looking to understand as part of this project the the different challenges that people uh, people find and that may come from industry their part industry partners from their students um, uh, or yeah, there are other pressures that are that are driving a, a change in engineering education. Um, so yeah, I thought I'd start by saying a little bit about, about UCL. It's it's a research intensive university. It's one of the older universities in uh, in the UK, um, and the engineering faculty itself is is relatively large. Um, we currently um, certainly in the UK context relatively large. Um, we have about three and a half thousand undergraduate students, about two thousand postgraduates. Um, being research intensive, there is a, a large staff cohort. Although, our, you know, as our staff student ratio often belies that a lot of those staff are are, are very much focused uh, on research, and those dedicated to teaching are um, are often considerably less. Um, and one of the things that we have very much tried to address as part of some of these changes are our, our gender balance. And that was you know, one of the issues that was at the at the heart of some of the changes that we, we wanted to make. And we've seen some improvement in across some of the fields. In 2012, our, our then dean looked to make a change to engineering to how we taught engineering. And, and during part of the development process, we looked at a way to try and encapsulate what it is that we saw as how we wanted to frame engineering and this, this is a phrase we often use because it picks out on a few things that we think are important to engineering education being the art and practice of changing the world for the use and benefit of all so to unpick that a bit what we wanted to try and highlight was that it was a very creative subject that engineering is about solving problems it's about inventing things developing things um, whereas many of our students were seeing it as just really about solving equations. Um, that was a, an image we wanted to try and change in how our students perceived engineering education as they came in. We wanted to highlight the fact that it was beyond theory, it was theory and practice together, um, and that actually prototyping and, and practical activity within engineering was, was very important. Um, we wanted to highlight the physical world that it's about engaging with with things and and the development and that's where the theory and practice come together but also this element of it being the use and benefit of all that people are absolutely central to students understanding good engineering design and engineering that is really going to deliver against um, societal demands in the future and we were seeing this very much starting to come from our, our students as well as um, from some of our professional bodies that the students wanted created wanted to know that they were addressing major challenges wanted to understand how what it was they were doing in their engineering degrees was was relevant was was going to be impactful you know whether that was how they went on with their careers but they wanted to to they you know they came many came to engineering really wanting to to make a make a difference and develop things for the benefits of people um, they wanted to see theory and practice being better connected and i think it was a fair accusation that our our early years of our curriculum were, were very theory heavy and that the practice only really came towards the end and uh, we you know, started from small toy problems and worked our way up to sort of bigger problems and actually uh, wanted to try and flip that on its head a little bit we were seeing more and more our students were very concerned about their employability and wanting to know not just the knowledge that we were developing in them, but the skills they could develop as part of as part of the program and really wanting to understand a, a global perspective of, of engineering. Um, 
I, I'm sure there, I know there are similar pressures in South Africa, but certainly in the UK, we've seen many, many reports come out and, uh, you know, here's some from, uh, from across the world talking about how there were skills gaps and, and, and the num gaps in the number of engineers that were being produced. Um, and so there was industry pressure to, to try and change the, the way we taught and the skills that we produced in graduates. And I think that's something we have to be a little bit careful of. And so we talked in the end about having uh, an education. We wanted to be clear that it, this isn't necessarily just training for industry, although employability and industry views are, are important. We wanted to ensure our students were motivated to develop solutions while developing these professional aptitudes and uh, competencies. But really bring into the core and integrate some of the pressures that we've seen from accreditation and from industry for understanding not just of the technical knowledge, although deep specialist knowledge is still very relevant, of socioeconomic issues, environmental context, sustainability, ethics, entrepreneurship, um, as well as communication skills and teamwork skills that the industry are really, really looking for and that will set our graduates apart as, you know, as top graduates when they go out into, into industry. So when the programme we adopted looked at using much more problem and project-based learning, more group assess group learning, and particularly quite a lot of activity in, in assessment and making sure that our assessment um, was not overburdening either staff or students, but was also very relevant to the type of uh, teaching that we were, we were bringing in. And looking at how we could particularly make it authentic, problems that, that felt relevant and real to our, our students. Um, and you know, one of the things we can we can talk about are some of the mechanisms we used with staff engagement, industry engagement to try and to try and lead this. So the upshot of this process was a, a program we call the Integrated Engineering Program. Um, and integrated is very key in, in two senses. One, we wanted to give the disciplines a chance to integrate, um, but also we wanted to integrate many of much of the knowledge and skills that, that students had. We tended to find that students saw things in nicely, nicely delineated boxes, often that we'd put in place for good administrative reasons, um, where they saw this piece of knowledge and that piece of knowledge and communication skills and ethics as very separate things. Whereas I think, you know, as engineers, we know that actually good engineering comes from the ability to bring those together, to integrate them to understand how different pieces of knowledge come together. And that's where good, good design and good problem solving comes from. And we wanted to try and bring that into our curriculum from very early on. So if we looked at what we had, we had accredited degrees and we had you know, silos, if, if I'm being, being honest, of, of the different disciplines. And although our students all come into a discipline and will leave as experts in that discipline, what we tried to do is give them opportunities to work with their peers through projects, through design activities, skills activities, right the way through the, through the program. So we often draw this rather like um, this sort of thread where we talk about this thread of projects that students take on, supported by the disciplinary content. And this is still 80, 85 percent of, of what we do. And, and some of it's been the way it has been talk, taught has changed. But actually, you know, the vast majority, as Lilani said earlier on, is, you know, is the similar technical content. But we are connecting it and teaching it through projects through a, a number of stages throughout the, the process. And as well as teaching professional skills and design, we're giving students regular opportunities to, to put that into practice and understand what it means in, in very, very relevant projects. And so, you know, I often draw on this, uh, this phrase from uh, Ove Arup, the, the founder of Arup and famous designer of things such as the um, Sydney Opera House, of, you know, integration, the total design means integrating the disciplines right from the start. And so that's something we, we quite believe in. Um, and so, what you would see if you if you came to UCL and anyone would be welcome was a sort of real theme of of um, of technical teaching, uh, which would look very familiar to, uh, as it would be in many universities. But it's very that technical teaching is very much connected to regular projects that we call the scenario. So this is an art example from the IMEC e challenge where students design and build 
um, these little robots, and this is one of the, the sort of the fun ones. We also have some that are much more in industry relevant, and we use these projects as 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 regular stop points within our curriculum where students um, put the skills that they've been learning um, to to the test. And at the end of the two years, we have a a, a large two week project that all. Um, it's about 900 students from across engineering and management science and computer science come together in where they're put in um, interdisciplinary teams and asked to tackle really wicked and relevant projects and problems um, across some of the UN sustainability goals. Um, we call this How to Change the World, and it's a title I've had a lot of trouble with because it, 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 you know, it sounds quite old and missionary, and I'm, I'm not so keen on that. But the way we try and frame it to students is this understanding that as an engineer, as a computer scientist, as a, as a management scientist, what you do um, will change the world for people. It will have an impact on people. And understanding that impact is, actually, is really central to, to being a good engineer and to understanding good engineering design. Um, I just want to give you one other brief example because I think it's, it's quite an interesting one because often people feel that you know, the projects are great and they're good for, for engineering design, but we've also incorporated this into the thread of mathematics teaching we have. And we've changed the way we teach maths quite radically. Um, I'm incredibly unpopular with our maths department because I took mathematics away from, from the maths department and we now teach it in-house. And very much changed it from what was a, a very theoretical maths program to something we call modeling and analysis with a real emphasis on you know mathematics for an engineer is about modeling problems it's the language we use to understand problems and to work towards solutions um, and so we bring in case studies and scenarios and teach the, the fundamentals alongside a program of, of computer modeling the, the fact that you know, we take core topics, link them to a problem, and then encourage the students to use their mathematical understanding to, to, address, to address the problem. So, you know, they will have theory, um, but then also how that can be related to a particular part of real world design, in this case, a, a microphone or, or coffee production. And so we're looking at how the math they learn is, is used in, in, uh, in, in the real world. And so this is another example of how this problem-based learning and project-based learning approach can be applied even to what are traditionally thought as, as quite theoretical subjects. Um, so that's a little bit about what we've done. I just wanted to say a, a little bit about you know, some of the challenges and barriers we face, because I think it's only, you know, often when I give this sort of talk, people are saying, "Oh, well, that's great! It's wonderful!" You know, surely you, you know, good for UCL, and but we have we have problems. And I think you know many of the challenges I found are are very similar, even though what we might want to do and what would be particularly relevant for us can be be quite diff different. And um, you know, I think one of the parts of this project will be these communities that can help to work together on how how we can jointly address some of the challenges and address some of the strategies. Um, so certainly when we started off, we heard a lot of a lot of criticisms. Finding room in the curriculum is, is a big problem. Um, and I think the integration can help there. Actually, we find that when you integrate topics, actually, you can be quite efficient in the way things things are taught. Having the ethics separately and, and, and other parts separately, actually, in the projects can be very efficient ways of covering a, a wide range of topics. Um, we faced issues with accreditation. Um, again, I think there's a lot of myths about accreditation. We found the accreditation bodies when we actually engaged with them very supportive. Um, and actually, you know, the integration was something that they, 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 they liked. But, um, you know, navigating accreditation is a, is a difficult one. Um, it does take a while. It does take considering what sort of spaces you might need. Um, and uh, and some issues with with internal regulation. So I think you know it's not not without its challenges. And I wouldn't want to come paint a rosy picture, but I think um, that it's it's all easy. But then you know, nothing nothing is. Um, this is just to give you an example of some of the activities we did with staff to bring staff along. And this is mapping um, the curriculum. And, and one of the things we found is that actually we have you know very very full curriculum and understanding what it is that um, is in that curriculum and how 
uh, uh, integration can actually bring together many of the things we teach is a very we found was a very useful exercise to understand where there were possibilities um but i think you know, a message i want to leave you with is that this is something that our students have found very beneficial and one of the things that they've really engaged with um the idea of bringing this thread of projects in is something that our, our students not only find very enjoyable, but actually a real opportunity uh, to test out their employability skills. We find it's what our students talk about when they go to interviews and they come back and tell us a lot about how well received these types of things have been um, when they go when they go to uh, to industry and they go go for internships and for, for their industry placements. Of really being able to demonstrate um many of the skills that are, that industry are, are are looking for so i hope that's painted a picture of what what ucl was attempting to do um and the experience that we've had um and you know very much look forward to 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 working in, in partnership with the with the, the group that we we have here uh to to support um what what are what is you know fantastic to see a very very strong locally driven initiative um, to to tr to develop some of uh, some ideas in in engineering education.